Hello, and welcome once again to Lato's Law. I'm Steve Lato, attorney at law in the state of Michigan, where I've been practicing law now for almost 24 years. I specialize in consumer protection and lemon law. I help people with their legal problems involving cars and other big purchases. I often write for Jalopnik's sub-blog, Car Buying, and from time to time I write for Opposite Lock and other places, and I also write books. My most recent book is a book called American Murder Houses, and it's exactly what it sounds like. One chapter each about various notorious murder houses around the country. You can read it and take yourself on a coast-to-coast -coast tour of the most notorious houses of homicide. Or at least that's what the book says. Today on Late Tales Law, we're going to talk about why you don't want to buy an RV. Don't buy an RV. I'm talking about recreational vehicles. Now, I understand the people out there are going to buy RVs despite what I tell you. But the point here is to learn what you can about it before you get involved in a transaction buying something that big. Recreational vehicles are huge purchases, often much, much more than a car, sometimes more than a house. I've had clients who spend a quarter of a million dollars on an RV, and it's a scary concept. You spend that much money on something, and people don't know what the law is. First thing you need to know is that an RV, despite the fact it's often got wheels and rolls down the road under its own power, is not covered by the Lemon Law in most states. So you buy an RV in Michigan, it's defective. You bring it to the shop four, five, six times. It spends six months in the shop in the first year. You can't force the manufacturer to buy it back as easily as you could as if it was a $20,000 car. Strangely, it costs 10 times as much, but the law is not the same. And the manufacturers know that. So the law you're going to be talking about is the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. The Magnuson Moss Warranty Act says that if the vehicle can't be repaired under warranty, uh, you can make the manufacturer buy it back after a reasonable number of repair attempts. But the reasonable is not defined. And because of that, manufacturers know that they can jerk you around more. It's not uncommon that people with RVs will have their vehicle in the shop seven, eight, nine times, six, seven, eight months in the first year. And the manufacturer says, hey, guess what? Bring it back in. We'll work on it some more. It's still not something that we're going to buy back from you because this is reasonable for a recreational vehicle to require this many repair attempts. Some of the confusion that happens with RVs is because there are more than one manufacturer involved. So you go and you look at an RV and it's, you know, brand a rvs okay brand a might be who put the box on the chassis the chassis might be built by somebody else the drivetrain might be built by a third company it's not uncommon you've got three major companies involved in manufacturing an rv when you buy a recreational vehicle it's not uncommon they walk out with a banker's box filled with notebooks and say here's your warranty what they mean to say is here are your warranties and the warranties come from each different manufacturer. So the box, the you know, the house unit on the RV comes from one manufacturer. The chassis is built, manufactured, and warranted by somebody else. And the drivetrain might be built and manufactured by even a third party. It's not uncommon that the chassis and the drivetrains in these are built by truck companies or bus companies. And so you might have a Bluebird uh, chassis or a Spartan chassis underneath an, an RV built by, like, say, Forest River or Damon. So when you buy these things, be aware of that, okay? I know people who bought an RV and were unaware of the manufacturer of the engine. And, you know, some manufacturers are very good, some are not. Maybe Cummins, might be Ford, who knows? So you got to find this stuff out. Do the research on the RV before you buy it and understand that the manufacturers of the RV might be different and they might have their own warranties. <clears throat> it also means that the RV is very, very complicated. One of the reasons you get so many different warranty booklets and you buy an RV is because RVs have got more systems in them than automobiles do. An RV is going to have plumbing in it. It's going to have electricity in it running to things like heaters and fans and air conditioners and refrigerators and microwaves and satellite dishes and, and television sets. I've had people who come into my office and say, Steve, I've got a defective RV. The cabinets are broken. The shower leaks. And it sounds like you're describing a bad apartment, which in many respects is what they are doing. So when you buy an RV, you got to know that there's so many more things that can go wrong with it that it might just boggle your mind. Uh, many people buy RVs, and the first time they buy an RV, they're shocked at how different it is and what they were expecting. A lot of people assume that if you're going to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars on something, it's going to be trouble-free. If you spent $200,000 on a car, you're going to get a trouble-free car. If it's a brand new car, and it's worth that kind of money. You drop a couple hundred grand in an RV and the shower might not work. The toilet might not flush. You might say, Steve, you're crazy. It's not going to happen. 
It's happened. I've represented dozens and dozens and dozens of people with defective RVs. I've represented people who've owned a quarter of a million to RVs that have the craziest things go wrong with them. Person buys a brand new six-figure RV. They get in it. They're driving it home from the dealership. It starts to rain. Water pours into the windshield. Somebody buys a brand new six-figure RV. They're driving it. Anytime it gets over 50 miles an hour, the rear axle catches on fire. Okay, Those are not normal things. If that happened to an automobile, you take it back and they'd buy it back from you. But the manufacturers know that the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act being less well-defined in the Lemon Law gives them a lot of leeway, a lot of gray area. Because of that, they take advantage of it. Another thing to be aware of is when you buy an RV, most RV dealers are very, very adept at protecting themselves, and so are the manufacturers. It's not uncommon that manufacturers' warranty booklets are filled with disclaimers that even the car manufacturers don't use. I've seen a lot of RV manufacturers in recent years limit the statute of limitations in their warranty booklet. And it says if you've got a problem with the RV, you've got to sue us within one year of purchase. Okay, so you buy an RV that's got a three year warranty on it and you drive it for a year and the thing blows up. You file a lawsuit. They will defend it. Say you brought your lawsuit too late. You've got to sue us within one year. And I've actually argued this to a judge and said, how can my client enforce anything after the first year because they can't file the lawsuit? And the judge said, well, they didn't like that. They shouldn't have agreed to it. My client says, I didn't agree to anything. They gave me a box filled with documents at the time of purchase. So believe it or not, when you're going to buy a $100,000 RV and they bring a box filled with documents out to you and say, by the way, you're signing a, a thing that says, I acknowledge having read everything in that box. You tell them, say, unfortunately, I got to sit down now and read everything in this box. Uh, they are not going to be happy and, and you probably won't do it, but that's the kind of stuff that's hidden in there. Also, the purchase agreement at many RV dealers these days, many purchase agreements contain language that say specifically things like, you agree not to sue us no matter what goes wrong with this RV. So you can buy a quarter of a million dollar RV from a dealership. If you sign that document and you're driving it home and it explodes, it bursts into flames and literally you barely get out of it alive and it burns all the way to the ground so that when the fire department gets there, there's nothing but a smoldering pile of ashes where your RV used to be, okay? You could go back to the dealership and say, guys, there's something wrong with my RV. They'd say, hey, you signed a piece of paper. You can't sue us. Now, you can sue the manufacturer for breach of warranty, but you can't sue us. All we did was sell it to you. And uh, that clause in their purchase agreement that says that you cannot sue them no matter what will be upheld by most courts. And Michigan gets upheld all the time. And a lot of times it'll say you can't sue us unless you go through an arbitration process. And the arbitration process is spelled out in the document. And the arbitration process is so difficult and time consuming and so slanted against the consumer that it's not even worth doing, okay? I understand if your RV burned to the ground, you'd file an insurance claim. But my point is simply this, no matter what happens, you can sometimes never even go back against the seller, okay? So you buy a defective product in a typical situation. I buy something from you, it doesn't work. I can give it back to you say, hey, this thing doesn't work. It's called revocation of acceptance. You can't revoke your acceptance to some of these RV sellers because they have you sign a document saying you can't. Okay, and you might ask, why is this? RV dealers have become very, very uh, attuned to the fact that a lot of buyers of these $100,000, $200,000 products get really angry when they discover how defective these RVs can be. So to protect themselves, they've got you signing these documents. And because there is no lemon law, they know that you're gonna have to just get entangled with the manufacturer and deal with the manufacturer on this. So the sellers are very, very sophisticated. Another problem we have in the RV industry, okay, is that there's so many manufacturers of RVs out there and they're often changing names or getting bought up and so on. So nowadays, you know, if you want to go buy a car, you go buy a General Motors product or a Chrysler product or heaven forbid a Toyota, you go buy some product. You've heard of these companies before. Most of them have been around for a while. General Motors, General, <laughs> General Motors has been around a while. So long I should be able to pronounce it, okay? General Motors has been around, so has Chrysler, so has Ford, okay? But you go to an RV dealer and you're walking along, there's all these different RVs and, and they all look really nice. They look really nice, okay? And you're looking at these RVs and you're asking around, you find that many of the RV companies are new, they've only been around a while and you don't know. The key is to find out the reputation of the companies, but don't ask the seller, okay? A, RV dealer is going to tell you that everything on their lot is great. We only deal with manufacturers that are reputable. That's not how you do it. You're going to want to go to a campground during the season 
walk around and look for somebody who's got an RV from the manufacturer that you're thinking about buying from and talk to that person. For some odd reason, a lot of people who use RVs are very outgoing, they're extroverts, they love traveling and meeting people, okay? Walk up to somebody who's got the RV that you're thinking about buying and say, guys, can you show me around? I'm curious, I'm thinking about buying one of these. What do you think? Tell me about it. Have you had problems with it? Have you had any warranty issues with it? It's amazing how many times I've met people who said, I bought an RV, I had all kinds of problems with it. I took it to the campground and the guy who runs the campground told me, I can't believe you bought that. Those things all have problems. Well, do this backwards. Go to the campground and talk to the guy at the front gate and say, I'm thinking about buying a ABC brand RV. What are your thoughts on that? Can you introduce me to somebody who's got one? Find out. That's how you're going to find this stuff out. There are better brands than other brands. And you got to figure this stuff out. I've had clients of mine who've bought brand new $100,000 RVs, taken them on their first trips, and then when they get underneath it to you know level it or whatever, they look underneath there and there's all kinds of rust on the frame of their brand new RV. They literally got it a week earlier and the underside is covered with rust. And again, the problem is that people tend to think of this like an automobile purchase. I walk around a car, a brand new car on a car lot, I'm not actually thinking to myself, gee, I wonder if I should get on my belly like a reptile and crawl underneath it. Most people think it's a brand new car. I don't need to do that. Brand new RV, you need to do that for several reasons. One is there's no lemon law, okay? So you get a vehicle that's defective, you're going to be fighting over it. You don't want one. It's defective. Number two, a lot of RVs are built in other states and driven to the place where it's being sold, while a lot of cars are brought in car haulers. And number three, a lot of RVs sit on lots for a long period of time. So an RV gets built in Indiana, gets driven up to Michigan in the winter time. It's parked on a lot for a while, sits there for a year, year and a half, and it gets sold to you as brand new. It might be brand new, but the underside might be covered with rust. Believe it or not, if you're going to buy a brand new RV, you should have it inspected by a professional. You might think I'm crazy on this one. Spend a couple bucks, get someone who's a professional to come out and inspect the RV for you. If you're going to spend $100,000 or $200,000 on an RV in particular, why not drop a couple hundred bucks? The salesman might think you're insane and might try to discourage you from doing this, but why would they want to discourage you from doing that? You're just trying to be an educated consumer. Have somebody come out and inspect the RV for you before you buy it. They'll climb around underneath it. They'll check the systems. A lot of times people will buy a brand new RV the salesman will walk through them and give them the walkthrough. Here's how this works. Here's a boom, 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 boom. And then they take it to a campground and they hook it all up and they can't get stuff to work. They don't know if they're doing it wrong. They don't know if it's broken. They don't know if it's hooked up wrong. One of the most common complaints I get is people say, I bought an RV. I took it to a campground and stuff wouldn't work. I couldn't get the guy who runs the campground. He couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get it to work. Other people were reading the manuals. None of us could get it to work. We brought it back to the dealership. The dealership said, oh, you were doing it wrong. Okay, we, we, we figured that you're doing it wrong. And of course, they take it to another dealership, or excuse me, they take it to another campground, and it again doesn't work, okay? The question, of course, is does this stuff not work or is it not being demonstrated properly? Who knows? So when you have an expert who gives you an inspection of the vehicle before you buy it, that person can also go through and say, yes, the air conditioning works, the hot water heater works, the toilet works, the shower works, and so on. You're gonna wanna have someone do that. If you know somebody who knows RVs, you can bring that person along as well. They could do it. But, but the point is that if you do not know RVs, don't buy your first RV and just trust that the dealership is taking care of you because there's a very good chance they don't. One of the scariest things about RVs is the difference between how they treat you when you're shopping versus when you come back for repairs. I've had people tell me that you know the salesmen are climbing all over them and treating them like royalty until they signed the documents. And then when they brought it back in for the first repair attempt, the, the dealership says, you know something, we're backed up right now. We can't get to your vehicle for six months. Or you gotta just leave it. We don't know when we can get to it. And people freak out. They say, wait, I bought this thing in April or May and I can't pick it up till October? I, I don't want it in October. I, I live in Michigan. I want, it, I want this thing in the summertime. You can have it in October. And they say, well, that's unfortunately we're backed up. A lot of RV dealers have got very small service departments, but huge sales departments. And that's backwards. And you don't want to be in the position where you find that out because they're not in a hurry to fix your RV because there's no lemon law. Lemon law makes them buy a vehicle back if it takes more than 30 days to fix it. No such thing with an RV. I've had people who bought an RV. They've owned it for 12 months and spent 11 months in the shop. I kid you not. They filed a lawsuit and the RV manufacturer says, that's typical. That's typical. They won't tell you it's typical when you go to buy it, but they will tell you it's typical 
when you bring it in for repairs. I've actually had a client of mine who bought a $200,000 RV, $200,000. And he's driving along one day and the accelerator pedal stops working because the connection to the rear engine, it's a pusher. The connection, the throttle cable comes apart and no longer is working, okay? So he's driving along and suddenly the pedal doesn't work anymore. So he manages to stop the vehicle, figures this all out. He calls the manufacturer to say, bring it to us, we'll fix it. He says, um, how do I do that? I can't get the throttle to work. They said, well, you can tow it at your own expense. It's going to cost a fortune or you can just figure out how to do it. So my client opens up the floorboards, reaches into the engine compartment, is working the throttle by hand while his wife is up front steering and yelling out the speed they're going at. And they managed to limp it like that into an RV dealership someplace where it gets reconnected and gets put back together again. That was one of the many problems my client had with that RV. We file a lawsuit against the manufacturer and the manufacturer is defending by saying there's nothing wrong with his RV because we fixed it every time he brought it in, despite the fact he spent over $200,000 on it and it had all kinds of crazy, crazy problems like this. And so during a break, my client couldn't contain himself and he turns to the attorney and goes, I can't believe you treat your customers like this. I can't believe your client and you treat customers like this. I spent $200,000 on one of your products and this is how you treat us? And the attorney actually said to him, if all you spent was $200,000 on an RV, you should have known what you're getting. You weren't spending enough money to get a good one. Honest to God. You need to spend more than that if you actually want to get an RV without these kinds of problems. And that was the attitude of that RV manufacturer. And I've encountered that over and over and over again. If you're buying an RV, expect to have lots of problems. Expect to take forever for repairs or learn to live with things not working. Okay? So if this worries you, like I said, have your brand new RV inspected and consider renting one before you buy one. A lot of RV places will rent you an RV for a week or two. Go find the RV that you're thinking about buying and see if you can rent one for a couple of weeks. Take it out for a couple of weeks and see how it works. If it lasts that first couple of week trial period, there's a chance that yeah, maybe you want to buy one of these. But you'd be surprised. I've had friends of mine rent RVs and all kinds of crazy things go wrong. And they go, well, it was a rental. And I say, no, no, no. It was an RV. Okay? So that's the reason I tell you don't buy an RV. If you're going to buy an RV, just keep all of these things in mind and protect yourself because of the fact that RVs, uh, it's a field fraught with peril. And if you want to do it and it's the lifestyle you're into, get yourself into it, but do it with your eyes open. Protect yourself and save your money. That wraps up this week's Latos Law. I thank you for watching and listening. Questions or comments, always fire them at me at latoslaw.com, L-E-H-T-O-S-L-A-W.com. I'm on Twitter at Steve Leto, at S-T-E-V-E-L-E-H-T-O. And of course, you can listen to the show and rate it on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and YouTube. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.